Hey there, welcome back everybody to my Insert Nerd vlog. Um, as you can see, I'm wearing a fantastic Christmas hat. Um, it's not a proper Christmas hat, I know. Um, I couldn't find one. Um, but this is, uh, it's, uh, it looks like it says O-O-O um, when I'm looking at it because of the way the camera is. But it actually says Ho 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 Prosecco. <laughs> So, yeah, so <laughs> it's a Christmas hat to me. <laughs> but little bubbles, that's what I love about Christmas hats. I love bubble, bubbles. Um, but yeah, so welcome back. Um, if you haven't seen me, then welcome. Um, I have done some recent videos if you want to have a look. So I talk about insects and entomology, but I also talk about different animals. Um, and, and animal welfare as well. I've got some of that old stuff. Um, it's on my channel, but it's called Animal Chit Chat, but it is on the Insect Nerd now. So some of the introductions have got the Animal Chit Chat thing, but actually I'm the Insect Nerd now. So just ignore that. But um, there's some really good advice there as well in my old videos. But for my new videos, there's Entomology Introduction. Um, what did I do last time? Oh yes, I did giant bean stick insects as well um they are fantastic have a look at that um and today what we're going to talk about is uh something so exciting so today i've got for you i've got i have got some moths in here so moths are the order of lepidectry we'll talk about orders a bit more um a, a different time so i'm just trying to organize my net so the two moths the, the moths i've got so far um are female. I haven't um, hatched any more yet and none have come out yet. Um, um, I'm quite fascinated by moths and butterfly um, uh, growth because it, it is fairly different. For example, uh, moths form cocoons whereas butterflies form um, sorry, moths form cocoons out of leaves and stuff whereas butterflies um, form chrysalises normally sort of on the ceiling of an enclosure or you know on a, in the wild on a on a branch or, or something like that so today I'm just going to show you this these type of moths they're not from England they are from India and Asia so they're called Indian moon moths um, I thought so when you get moths sometimes um, you do think um, sometimes people um, miss sort of misread what they are and that is absolutely fair enough because um, they're not there's so many species that are so much are so similar so I'm just trying to get her out I've got two of them so far one is beautifully formed unfortunately the other I think um, has had some problems with forming in the cocoon so its wings are damaged and um, it doesn't look great but it's surviving so this is the first one well we get there won't we um so yeah these are from india or asia um sort of around that area um how you can tell they've got lovely patterns if i can show you and it stops fluttering about there we go uh it's got lovely patterns um you can see the tails are just green uh there's no color at the tail but end it's not really a proper tail, but I call it the tail end because it looks a bit like a tail. Um, oh, I hope it doesn't pee on me. Uh, sometimes I wee on you. Um, a little, little, little piddle. Um, they've got lovely patterns that look a little bit like yellow eyes there. I don't know if you can see. Um, so yeah, this one's female because the males actually have pink and yellow bits at the ends of the tail. The tail bits, these tail bits there at the end, can you see them? Yeah, whereas this one doesn't. So this one's a female, and the females are much bigger. Um, they do look a lot like other. Um, I mean, they are in the silk moth family, so they they do closely resemble other moths, like the Chinese moon moth, which is also in the silk silk moth family. Um, yeah, uh, Chinese moon moths. I thought these were Chinese moon moths to start with. Um, the, the larvae stages are very similar. But um, I checked it out and actually it turns out these are Indian moon moths and luckily they ate the same thing otherwise I would have been doomed. Um, but they are very pretty and amazing and I can't wait for others to hatch. Um, this one was flying around my room a little bit. Um, 
but yeah I, 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 I would for these ones I would recommend not to have a big fly sash maybe get them out um, but they are very delicate um, as you can see this one's wing it's flapping but it was flying around the tank and it sort of um, I have I have put like sort of um, I'll show you a bit later on maybe um, the enclosure um, the enclosure is not actually there it, it's in front of me somewhere it's a it is a glass tank but I've put loads of material on it um, to stop the moths from um, so if they sometimes they go a bit mental and they fly and they fly and then um, they hit the glass um, so a net would be preferable but for these their temperature range is quite high and it's so cold in the winter so I would I would recommend really a tank or I don't really like plastic I'm a bit of um there you go um sorry I'm, I'm gonna watch them off and talk at the same time <laughs> um I'm a bit of a um yeah I'm, I'm not a snob in in, in enclosures I, I I have insects that have nets but when it comes to temperature um you know you need the right temperature requirements for your um insects and animals because they're not going to survive that way are they um without a decent temperature so their temperature is about sort of 25 to 30 um because obviously they come from really hot countries they can be a bit cooler at night i would say maybe 25 at night um but um yeah um i would keep them as um i would keep probably most most moths in plastic containers first unless they can take a lower temperature so i've got some at the moment um, some larvae and they can take um, I think they're Madagascan moths I'm not sure I have to tell you sort of the, the name another time um, but they, they can resist sort of lowish temperatures not really low but lowish temperatures but if they are like a, something like a Chinese moon moth or an Indian moon moth um, and you know a tropical moth then I, I you know um, expect to um, sorry it's just, just flying about <laughs> as moths actually do um i you know expect to keep them in a plastic tub the larvae and then as they old they're older get a ter terrarium quite a tall one and, and and maybe you know put some soft black oh where did you go sorry you were naughty um yeah so and put some sort of um either I, I wouldn't suggest anything i would suggest more sort of like i've got some old pillowcases and i've stuck them to the glass it doesn't look the smartest i must admit but as long as the moth is safe that's 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 all the that matters to me you're walking into my thing again going for a little journey uh last night um, i got it out for a bit actually i must admit um it was amazing uh, <laughs> um yeah so it's amazing what these um moths can do as well um their flight is amazing like last night I, I got it out for a bit I was excited um be aware when you do handle any sort of lepidoptera family so moths and um butterflies I will talk about I have got a butterfly free roam on here but it's not a proper care video so in the summer when I do my moths again when I raise them I will do a proper care video for you guys um but oh, it's just flown on the floor so is she um I will do a proper uh butterfly care for you and I will do um I'm this is sort of a moth introduction I wouldn't say it's a proper care video I'll probably do an in-depth care video but um this is just sort of highlighting what's important really um but this species in particular if we're talking about care yeah definitely terrarium when they're older um oh yeah a terrarium when they're older um so that sort of start from when they are they are eggs yeah so put them in a plastic tub um, a heat mat is definitely required I would put it under not in because it might be too hot for them especially as they're caterpillars they'll probably be on the floor crawling on the floor but they do like to crawl up high as well um, but I wouldn't put them in a big big pot because if you put them in a really big pot they might fall and, and hurt themselves and then also um, you've got to sort of think about the food plants so depending on the species so this one actually um, is sort of a similar family to the Chinese moon moth so luckily um, feeding it um, hawthorn and apple I fed it apple for a while but apple is not 
really in season anymore because it's winter so hawthorn i had to feed it hawthorn um some eat privet um it really depends and you have to research this um yeah so just small plastic containers with lots of ventilation and a heat mat for not a high heat mat too high will burn them but just maybe 12 watts something like that um and then as they grow old you sort of you change them every sort of like butterflies you change them i would say every day because um if you leave it for too long if you leave because they poo an awful lot caterpillars um it will create disease <laughs> Um, and yeah, that won't be very good for your caterpillars and, and your, um, they won't, probably won't survive. And then you just sort of cut bits of leaves and, and change it every so often. Um, you can put them in pots of water, but I prefer just to put them around on the floor to start with because I don't want the caterpillars falling in and drowning because they are quite small when they hatch from the egg. Um, so that's just sort of their sort of small care. So from egg to caterpillar, I will put them in a smaller pot and then Moths can be um, cannibalistic, um, moth larvae can, um, adult moths don't eat, they don't have the correct um, digestive or mouth parts, but in terms of um, when they are younger they eat a lot of leaves, obviously they can get, I wouldn't keep them in big groups as larvae, um, if you get loads, if you get like 20 eggs and, and more than you expect hatch, I would keep up to maybe six larvae in each pot because otherwise they can eat each other and then as they grow if there's um larvae that are a, of a bigger stage of an of each other i would um put the bigger larvae the bigger stages in a different pot to the little stages so the little the little um larvae have time to um have time and space and the opportunity to eat and grow bigger so um the bigger ones don't one eat the smaller ones and two take all their food um so i will just put them in different pots depending on the size of larvae and and not but not you don't yeah and um obviously it's, it's, it's so important not to overcrowd them so don't overcrowd them just stick to six larvae it's important um yeah um yeah so that's sort of a bit about the egg and larvae care um in terms of cocoons i know i haven't mentioned that yet don't worry come and do it um cocoons um so yeah these ones in particular for, for um cocoons um actually i've got one to show you um just a sec i'm gonna put this one back for a second because it was pretty settled but i'm gonna leave it alone for a sec um i'll show you my injured one in a minute as well because um, and I'll talk about injuries and uh, insect injuries another time. Um, some just some common ones and, and things like that. And oh look, um, Ms. laid some eggs on me. She's laid some eggs on me. Um, so that also one thing why I'm on the subject is they do lay eggs, um, but um, sometimes they lay eggs and they're not fertile. Um, sometimes moths, some species can lay eggs on their own by pathogenesis, like sick insects and leaf insects, and they will hatch. Um, if I'm totally honest, I'm not really sure if these are fertile in, or infertile, so I might just test it out and see and then let you guys know because I've never kept I've never kept a lot of moth species before. It's more phasmids, so I'm quite excited to see that. And if they hatch, I'll let you know. I will probably let you know if they don't hatch as well, but... You know i'll be more excited if they hatch um so i mean these look a bit more the other ones that i picked up were from the other the other one um because some moths are, can actually mouth male out some i don't know if it's necessarily um some some scientists say i don't know if it's necessarily proven but some scientists and entomologists say that actually male moths can lay eggs as well um but yeah you know like male sort of seahorses can give birth sort of stuff like that um it's odd like some some animals and insects are both male and female like why it's... anyway i'm not going to keep talking about that because we'll go off topic but yeah these this this is what the eggs so these are eggs and they're not poo because you can tell they're eggs because they're sort of um they're in clusters normally they lay them in clusters and they lay a lot of them and that's what they spend their lifetime doing um I'm going to just put this somewhere and I'm going to show you the cocoon because it's quite exciting and I kept it so we're going to have a look at it together just a second. Sorry. Sick kitty. 
serious. I'm back. So, in the cocoon stage, um, moths normally take generally about four to six weeks to emerge. Um, so this is a cocoon that my last one burst out of. It's made from leaves. And what they do is they weave the leaves together with um, silk. And it's, it's so tight, look, I can't open it. Oh, I'm getting my keyboard all dirty now. <laughs> um, it's worth it. Um, so like it's it's such it's such a tight parcel that I can't open it. Um, I'm so fascinated by it as well because I I just I wonder what there's something gooey in there <laughs> for all the squeamish people. Look away. No, I can't actually undo it, um, and I'm not going to because I mean there's nothing in there, so I could, but um, it's just so tight and it would just take me ages. Um, but this is the cocoon. It came. It actually came from this hole here, so it burst out. And sometimes some fluff comes off from the moth, um, so it's it's a great um, experience. Um, in terms of cocoons, you just sort of leave them, and um, still in this stage and in the adult stage, you have a heat mat. Um, I I have put it um, not under the tank, but in the tank, but with loads of soil on top, just so it's not too hot. But also, it is really cold now, um, and it's okay to put a heat mat inside the tank it's just for when they're babies you don't really want to burn them when they're on the floor um yeah well when they're you know small um when they're larval larvae stage sorry um so yeah these in terms of sometimes um i've got a few left but i don't want to keep moving them i only move them if i clean them out um which i haven't done for a while because i transferred them from a net and i've got soil and i just sort of clean the soil out around them and i don't really need to because these two don't really make a mess so i would just literally like um put some soil in there um clean the soil out and the, and the leaves obviously and then um i mean i haven't got many leaves now because i don't actually really eat moths um but i would spray you spray the cocoons a little bit not too much just to help them because of the, if, um to, to sort of help them sort of break when they break out they need a little bit of moisture um so yeah i'm still waiting for mine to i've got two well i've got three but what i know is one has made a cocoon in a very awkward place on a net and i can't i couldn't i couldn't move it so um yeah it's it might be too cold to um emerge it might not emerge until the summer um when moths um get too cold to emerge so when the temperature drops they go into something called disports or overwintering which is sort of like hibernation but it's not like a chosen thing so you know as some animals hibernate like hedgehogs they hibernate at this sort of similar time of year around you know winter they hibernate um they don't choose to hibernate because it's winter they just choose to whenever the temperature drops so literally it could be you know if it just drops by a couple of degrees they might not they might not emerge until later so i would be patient um i know what it's like you have insects and stuff and um, and cocoons you want to hatch you're like oh my god when's it gonna hatch it's not gonna hatch is it but wait wait don't don't throw them away or, or despair over it because they will merge it just takes time and sometimes if it's extra cold it will take more time and it really depends as well when um that moth has gone into a uh, cocoon sometimes if they've come and gone if they've been the last one to go into a cocoon they might be the last one to emerge but actually coming to my next point um so this is my second one and unfortunately it's really sad but actually he's doing really well come on so this one is an odd shape um i don't know what happened um I put him in a, his cocoon in a nice place, but I think he emerged a bit too early because actually he was probably one of the last to go into a cocoon. Um, however, when you do have a heat mat, you um, it does sort of speed up the metamorphosis so they could emerge earlier than normal. But I don't feel it was overly hot in my enclosure. I mean, it wasn't cold, but it wasn't, you know, overly hot, hot. Um, so this one emerged a bit too early and its wings hasn't developed properly 
which is not obviously fantastic for it, you know it's obviously not very happy but at the same time it can flap its wings and it can move about and um, it's not in too bad shape except from that the wing bits its wings haven't grown properly and you, you know that you can see oh uh, flying on the floor you can see the yellow tinge the males are actually much more than the females um, but the, the wings haven't sprouted properly they're all screwed up um, I think it's something I will talk about insect um, injuries um, and sort of maybe sort of how to be patient about it but um, I will talk about that at another time because um, we're talking about moths in this video but yeah so just wait for a few weeks for them to emerge and then what um, and then what you do is don't touch them for at least 24 to 48 hours um, sometimes if they're scared they do wing on you so I will wear gloves for the first time handling them um, but if you do handle them don't handle them too much because they're very delicate um, actually compared to butterflies they are very delicate but they are both in the same family so they are both very delicate I mean they're both in the same order Lepidetra so they are both very delicate creatures so I think what you know ha handle them yes a little bit but be gentle and um, if you have children at home and they want moths and stuff that's great that's fantastic but maybe handle them yourself um, because um, they are very very delicate and one move with handling can can cause injury so please be very careful with them um, but yeah I think that's about it for me um, and, you know just remember to spray it so often um, and look at the food plant mine was hawthorn and um, apple I've already said that um, I'm sort of repeating myself in it but yeah um but yeah merry christmas by the way it's a uh, christmas period um and thank you for listening to my video um i know it's 20 minutes long but it's totally worth it right um so yeah thanks and if you want to know more about um i mean i haven't done a moth page yet but i've done a butterfly page so if you want to know more about butterflies um so go to my website www theinsectnerd.co.uk that is now live on google um it was sort of live but not not done properly so a few people could find it so have a look at that and if you'd like to su subscribe and see more of this lovely face go to the subscribe button and just press subscribe you know and also i'm on instagram if you want to see i have um, a few videos of me holding the, the moth um, from last night. If you want me want to see that, then go to then follow me at the Insect Nerd ninety seven. Thank you very much for your time. Um, hope to see you soon and keep warm in this very cold time of the year. I don't particularly like winter. <laughs> anyway, goodbye.